Hey guys, this is Obadiah here, coming at you with another TRP3 extended video, where today I'll be going over some TRP3 game event links inside our quest campaigns, make the quest a little bit more exciting and a little bit more immersive. So as you already know, I've made this object right here into an interactable bounty board, and I've already made a quest as well. So I wanted to add a new quest that actually more highlights TRP3 game event links in general. And what these do is that these are events that trigger during your campaign and can actually run workflows and conditions and can make things a little bit more automatic and make things feel a little bit more immersive. So for today's quest, we're basically going to be doing a kill mob uh, quest where we have to kill a certain amount of a mob inside the cemetery. Let's go ahead and accept this quest. and It'll tell us to go to the Tranquil Cemetery. And at the Tranquil Cemetery, what we'll do is we'll actually have to kill a certain number of zombies in the general area. Now then, I've made it so that this quest will only accept you killing certain types of uh, mobs, and that's where the magic of game event links comes in. So I'll just show you what happens. So, what will happen if I try killing one of these mobs? Is I actually get a number. I've set it to out of 10 so far. But essentially, it goes up if I kill any of these mobs. Now if I go away from this zone, let's say... Or hell, let's just go kill the skunk. You'll see that the number doesn't uptick. And that's where things get a little interesting inside the TRP3 extended mechanics. So let's open up our quest. Alright, so we're in the bounty board. Let's go to Quell the Undead, which is the quest we're on. Let's go to the first quest step. So. What I have here is I have a game event link, which is the main source of the video today, and we set up a game event link that's called TRP3 Kill. So what you do is you go to Add Event Link, you open the event browser, and at the very top is the TRP3 Extended Events, where it has a TRP3 Kill event. So basically what this does is whenever you kill a mob during an active campaign, is it will generate these six, I'm sorry, ten arguments. And each argument is described, so it'll generate the unit type as a string value, it'll generate the killer GUID as a string, and so on. And it stores this information if you set up this game event link, and we'll run a workflow as well. So what we do is we'd click on this, and we'd set a workflow, which in my case it was kill number, and there we go. So this is the actual game event link. You can see it's not conditioned. It just has the linked workflow. Let's go over to the workflow and see what happens. So I want you guys to ignore anything that has hint in it because that's for the uh, hint displaying and the objective displaying for my campaign. So the first thing it does is it checks the fifth argument of the string value and sees if, if, if it's equal to a skeletal mage or skeletal warrior. So if we go back to game event links and just look, at TRP3 kill, the fifth argument is the victim name, so the target we have, and the string value. So essentially, when this game event triggers, it stores all this information uh, into argument strings. So the fifth argument string will save the victim name. Thus, when this workflow is triggered, it is checking if this fifth argument string, which was the victim uh, ID, is equal to skeletal mage or skeletal warrior. Any other mob that I kill won't trigger this workflow as a result. Now then, I might have not done this the most smart way, but I essentially initialized a variable called var kill and set it equal to zero and immediately added a plus one to it. So I added uh, a variable so that var kill is equal to the variable plus one. And then I immediately display the variable out of 10 on dead slain. And that gives you the effect of, oh, I've killed one undead and it gives you the 1 out of 10. So each time I kill a mob, it'll check to see if it's equal to Skeletal Warrior or Skeletal Mage. Bar kill will increase by 1, and then we'll display bar kill out of 10. Finally, once we get to 10, so if bar kill is greater than or equal to 10, it'll trigger step 1, which will actually move things on to the next quest step, which we can see here. There. Objective complete, kill all local zombies, a new objective, return to Darkshire. And if you see if I try to kill any more, the, uh, the display of how many I've killed has gone away. So, 
that shows a pretty brief introduction into game event links. Uh, this has been an area that's been a little bit more confusing for me though in tier PU3 extended, so I thought it'd be good to uh, make another video about it. Similarly, I've used the zone changed uh, uh, function, so when we entered the Tranquil Cemetery, you saw that uh, a certain display of stuff popped up, and that's what that's for. Anyways, that's going to be it for today. I know it's a short video. Um, I can definitely go through this quest setup if you guys would like to see more. Um, I even have some uh, looting involved uh, where we loot Scourge Stones, which will be contributing to the overall uh, uh, theme of the quest. You see I've looted one. Um, and also you'll see that when I loot these, it can't loot them from the same corpse twice. And that's also related to the game event links, and I can go into more detail with that if you guys would like me to. So, anyways, that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much. Drop a comment and a like, and I'll see you guys next time.